Hi, everyone. I'm going to start since we're running a little late. Um, I'm here to present uh, work that we're doing to help um, analyze uh, actually open source mailing lists in general, um, but I've done a number of uh, open street map mailing lists. Um, so just a little teaser of what I'm going to show you. And again, it's uh, graphs, data, and sex. But in this um, example, it's gender when we say sex. Um, sure, sure. Thank you. Um, so I've, uh, we've a, gr a little group of us um, that we're doing on our side project, um, we started to analyze a uh, couple mailing lists. Um, we'll go into these in more depth later, but the OSM Dev, the OSM Talk, um, Talk US, and the hot OSM mailing list. Um, but before I get into that, I kind of want to frame like why we would even uh, attempt to do something like that. Why is that important um, for us? Um, and do I have any hobbies? So, um, to, to, uh, to begin, um, so I joined uh, OpenStreetMap in May 2007, which um, you know, I think actually gives me a little bit of street cred. Um, and uh, I did it for the purposes of an art project. Um, I was uh, mapping all of the uh, metro stations in Madrid. And then I made like these collages, and they ended up being wallpaper, and I made a room, and I called that art. Um, and then I left. Um, uh, you know, Mike McGursky and Ivan Sanchez, who I think are still part of the, well, you know, Mike is still part of the OpenStreetMap communities. They helped me a little bit, but I didn't really understand that what this community was all about. Um, I didn't understand the concept of uh, a tool base and a community. Um, this was just like, you know, a software that I downloaded uh, to get my artwork done. Um, I've been involved with Open Source Geo uh, for the past four years, um, and have uh, now, I think, um, has really shifted my understanding of what uh, community means and when it comes to open source technology. And so I rejoined um, as an editor, contributor, in March um, 2013, because I couldn't remember my password, um, and have been involved uh, with some of the um, satellite imagery tracings. So, you know, uh, there's been a session on it, um, you know, even in the data uh, report, like community is a word that you hear over and over again um, when you talk about open source and when you talk about open street map. Um, and it's really uh, at the heart of um, when we say, when I think of open street map. And so if you want to get some quotes and you don't trust me, you can pretty much go to every document um, on the wiki about how, you know, community is important, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so to me, that begs, begs the question, like, who exactly is our community? Like, yes, our numbers of users are increasing. Um, I think there's been some interesting presentations about what the kinds of, you, what's a power mapper as opposed to a casual mapper. But in terms of the demographics of who's um, contributing, I, don't, I haven't seen much of that conversation. So uh, this is going to dive into that. So um, believe it or not, um, most of our community um, research shows um, are well-educated white men uh, with a pension for high-paying tech jobs, um, and also there are some academics. Um, now, you might be asking yourself, what? Wait, there are no women in that mix? And this is where we break into the interactive session. Has there been a talk with an interactive session? I'm, I don't think so. So um, I'm going to go through a couple of statistics um, that I think really help frame the conversation around community. Um, and the more you guys contribute, uh, the faster we'll go. So, female representation in the geospatial industry. Anyone want to give a guess? Five percent. That's actually very wrong. Um, so, forty percent. So that's that's actually right. Pretty good. I mean, that would even be like called equitable. Um, and uh, I think it, it's a lot of um, people in the environmental, I'm taking the statistic from kind of like the environmental space. Um, number of female graduates from geospatial programs. You want to try again? So, seven, wow, okay, we got some optimists in the room. Anybody else, anybody else? 53? That's really nice, you guys are good. Um, it's actually 34, but you, it's like you're a positive person, right? We have a lot of positive... So, um, no, it's 34, but still, I mean, that's, that's okay, you know. Um, female computer science graduates, there's obviously been a lot of, you know, media around this. Um, anyone want to give a guess about what this number might be? 10, okay, that's the pessimist in the room. Um, anybody else? 35, okay. It's 25, um, and it's actually going down. Um, it used to be a lot higher. Well, as in like a couple percentage points, but higher. 
Um, now, this is an interesting statistic that I just found about the other day and, and why everybody should go to o OpenStreetMap workshops. I sat next to somebody who actually researched this. Um, and in a study that she did, um, she asked the question, how many women have actually heard of OpenStreetMap? Anyone want to give a guess on that? It is not 70, whoever gets before. Five, two. Wow, OK, no. Um, it is 23%. This is, yeah. Um, and actually, 69% is, I think, her number, 59, something above 50 um, was her number. And, and we can go read the paper together later this, the, to, to understand more of her process. Right, exactly, yes. Um, it, I think it, so I, I, um, I think it was a pretty wide, ver yeah, I think it was actually um, over 1,000 people on an international scale, um, though they did get rid of the Russians. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know why. So, um, number of women speakers at this conference. I'm one, three, five. Okay, close, 12. Um, and 12% 12 now, I think there actually is a great deal. I'd like to get the numbers in terms of attendance, but this is actually considered a high number. Um, not for geek feminists, um, website, wiki page, but I mean, this is higher than um, we've seen in the past. So we're making progress. Um, now, two more, so, and then you guys can just sit and tweet or something. Um, percent of, w that's what I've been doing. Um, percent of women contributing to OpenStreetMap. Wow, okay, not 70, huh? 3%, you're right. Um, some numbers range from two to five. We took a one somewhere in the middle, um, and there's a lot of research about that. Um, I think this is a really scary number. Wikipedia is 9%. I know, so Wikipedia is doing better than us, you know. So, um, three percent. That's so. That eighty, like, what is it? Five percent of all mappers is doing the majority of like the edits. Blah blah blah. Three percent. Um, I mean, there's probably. Is there a female power mapper? I'd like to meet her. Um, and then percent of women I involved in open source, or oh, that participate in open source. I hope you're seeing a general trend here. So, anyone want a fifty-fifty? Two. Okay. One, so 1% um, of women um, are active in open source communities. I, you know, I have been involved in open source, as I said, for four years. I go to a lot of conferences where I'm a minority, and this really was a scary number. Like, so I think um, we've talked about a gender gap when it comes to technology, um, but this is actually very specific to open source, um, and uh, it's a very different 1% um, than, than we've heard in the press. So how did this happen? Um, how is it that an a environment that um, cares about transparency and community and, you know, I believe in everything that OpenStreetMap stands for, and I think many of us do, how did something like this happen? Um, so there's been a great deal of research about why there's a gender gap in, in open source um, communities that's more significant than um, traditional communities. Um, so I'm going to go through some of those ideas very quickly. Uh, maybe the actual structure of open source communities with their uh, lack of rules um, adds to more discrimination and makes it harder for um, people of difference, regardless of gender, um, to participate. Uh, maybe there's uh, this kind of inertia. I find this one interesting when I was doing research. You know, these things got started with a certain kind of ideology um, by certain people. And if we want change, uh, we have to um, fight against that inertia. And I think anybody who's trying to make a new website for OpenStreetMap might experience it, that as well. Um, Maybe there's an incentive and motivation gap. So women and men um, has been a lot of research about how they relate to um, competition differently. And these badge systems or gamification um, um, uh, have a you know, gendered effect. Um, maybe men and women uh, communicate differently. And some of the things that, say, perhaps we see on the listservs um, are you know, easier for men to participate in than it is for women um, or, or other kinds of conversations. Um, and maybe there's active hostility towards women. And there's a, a good deal of research that I couldn't find a great quote um, about, um, you know, people being, uh, women being attacked um, specifically because of their gender um, in conversations at conferences, et cetera. So that sucks. I think um, we can acknowledge that, or I'd like to think that, that we can. Um, but I, this is, um, and I thought it was obvious that this is a problem. 
um, and that we need to take this seriously because, you know, I want to be a proud of this community, and I think many other women do. Um, but I kept getting this question, like, why does this really matter? Like, is this really a problem? And I, I got it in, in many interesting uh, ways. So is this a problem? Uh, maybe, you know, maybe girls just don't like computers or maps or open stuff. <laughs> I'm paraphrasing. No. Maybe op OpenStreetMap is a man's field, like construction work or firefighting. And this is actually from an OSGO board member, I think, or member. Um, and I was like, yeah, maybe it's like firefighting. <laughs> well, and I'm sorry if I made anybody uncomfortable there, but go to a man's conference. Um, so I'd like to establish that this is a very serious problem. And it's a serious problem um, both for the growth of our community um, and the growth of our technologies. I'm going to go into three specific reasons why it's a problem. One, um, and this is a quote from the same woman that did the study uh, about uh, women's under, like uh, if they'd heard about OpenStreetMap, and I'll, I'll give an example from her. So she um, begins with the quote, maps are biased by the norms, traditions, assumptions, and political biases of the map maker. I mean, we all, rec I, think, I think we all recognize that there's a subjectivity to the creation of maps, um, and that we're creating a knowledge base and a representation of the world, and who's creating that matters. Um, and she gives the example, um, a very specific example of a conversation where there are actually only two tags um, that indicate um, any sort of care tags. One is a baby hash. I still don't know what that is, and I don't care to. And the other one is a, um, a kindergarten. And so there was a proposed feature um, for child care. And I don't know all of the rules. Um, somebody brought up some subtleties um, the other day. But let's just say it was um, not, it was rejected. Um, and there was a lot of hostility towards this idea. Um, so now, if we look at all the different kinds of tags that we have for bars and how quickly I think like strip club was like you know proved within an hour, um, this is whether you think this is wrong or not. Maybe there were like some weirdness in the proposal. Um, this is obviously a representation of the priorities of the community. So we're creating a just like Wikipedia, we're creating a knowledge base. It may not it may not look like that, um, but that knowledge base is about the world and it sh I think it should represent the diversity of the world that we, ha we live in. Um, two, I, I haven't necessarily seen any research on this, but I think this is a really interesting, uh, I mean, this is my, this is what I'm proposing. Um, so I'll put right 2013 on the bottom. Um, so we see more and more that open source communities are serving as a model for how we engage with civic um, uh, entities and uh, stuff like Code for America, which which are great, but you know they're using um, like hackathons um, for this uh, a, as a mechanism for engagement. And so there are things that are great about open source communities, and I think many of us here can attest to that. But it is not perfect. Nobody thinks it's a utopia, and it's important for us to look at um, where it's not working, especially if it's going to be a model for how we're going to engage the citizens and the public. That's, that's, that's my two, that's, I could be quoted by that. Um, and then uh, a third is about the tools that we're creating. So there's been a lot of research about the value of diversity. Um, and you know, right now we have um, a great deal of, uh, I guess you could call it cultural diversity. I mean, there's people all over the world. And diversity has helped for us to create sustainable tools and to be innovative in this space. Um, but we need that to continue. Uh, and in order for that to continue, um, we're not, we need, we need to expand the reach of our maps, and I'm ruining this, but the sustainability of our tools. So diversity is really key for us to continue to grow. I mean, we're relatively, I mean, I know we've been around for, what is it, 2005? That's a long time. Um, and I was really funny when Eric Fisher was saying, these edits are like really, really, really old. And I'm like, that makes me feel old because it's only 2005. But this is something that we want to exist for a very long time. And so thinking it out past um, the next like five years. I mean, we want, I, I would imagine we want diversity to be a priority for, uh, for us to continue to innovate. And so to summarize, um, the future of our work um, depends on converting more white males, and I use the word conversion um, here from, from Martin. Um, but it means like attracting more white males, we need to grow our community. Um, but it also um, relies on attracting more other underrepresented groups. Um, and, and women is what, women, Gender is one way that we can look at that, but there are obviously many, many different uh, demographics that we can uh, look at. So what, what can we do? Um, we could 
stop being assholes, right? And everybody has seen the mailing list temper tantrum or I'm smarter than you and we're just going to joust for who's going to be, um, you know, technical supremacy or like the act of hostility um, towards new people. Um, we could just be like, whatever, I'm out of here. Um, and this, uh, I mean, this I feel like I encounter a lot. I, I just, you know, I hesitate to engage um, I'm not ready, I don't know enough, um, I'm maybe a little gun shy from other uh, past examples, um, which I think a lot of women are from the stories that I hear. Uh, and maybe we just leave. You know, I don't like mailing lists, they're like 1999 or something. You know, somebody, this is, I'm paraphrasing, um, and we should be talking about like Facebook interactions, which are all really valuable, but we have um, with us uh, years and years of interaction, online interaction, that uh, I think is really valuable as we design what our next tools are and as we consider mailing lists um, as a forum that could be actually really productive. Uh, so I'd like to emphasize that if things are not working in our community, it's not because we have the wrong tools, but because we have the wrong way of being with each other. So. Um, my recommendation is not about like you're an asshole. I, you know, I'm leaving mailing lists, whatever. Um, but is really to start looking at the dynamics that, that exist um, and start gathering not just uh, stories um, and qualitative data, um, but real quantitative data about already what's existed, and then use that data uh, along with like the human intelligence, you know, um, to create really focused initiatives that we can. Uh, and I'd like to emphasize focused on gender, focused on these uh, discrepancies, that where we can me measure goals. And uh, let's do it all together, because we're a community. Um, and it's nobody's, not one, it's not my problem, it's not your problem, it, it's really our problem as a community. So this is the framing that Open Threads um, came from. This is why we're doing it, and this is why we think it's a um, really important project. Um, and we're taking the kind of uh, concept that, you know, these are complicated spaces. Um, they're not necessarily uh, there's a clear right and wrong. Um, and again, that mailing list um, really can serve uh, as lessons uh, as we move forward for other social interactions. So I'm gonna go quickly through methodology. I've, I've been wanting to do this for years, ever since I went to my first like geo conference or probably sit, like, looked at the first rant on an open layers mailing list. I mean, it's just like fascinating places. Um, and it took a couple years before I found people who were also interested in this. So I'm working with two colleagues at, um, or two people I know, I mean, now they're colleagues, um, at the Open Technology Institute. Um, there's, I'm not the tech lead, so if we're gonna get technical, well, I'm gonna have to call them up. I'm not the creative director, um, but I try to, you know, nag. And then um, we frame the problem in terms of uh, this um, idea of open government, um, that it's not just about openness, but also um, who's participating and who, who's collaborating. And we designed um, both our data structures, which I'll get into, and the questions that we wanted to a ask the mailing list um, around those three concepts. So um, in terms of transparency, it's like who's participating? Who, um, in, when it comes to collaboration, I have to read it here. Yes, how are people working together? Um, and uh, in terms of participation, painting, like are people creating messages? And we structured the data um, in these th three formats. So participant, again, author, uh, message is the body of the email, and the thread is how people are working um, and responding to each other. So, so this is so what we've, I'm gonna get to this, but what we have successfully done is started to parse mailing lists. What I'm gonna show you is really just a subset of what I think is possible in terms of visualization and some of the you know, potential observations and questions that we can, we can ask. Um, but some of the things that I find really interesting in how we've been organizing the data structure um, is stuff like, this was actually inspired by Alex Barth. Um, how much time are people spending on mailing lists? Um, we've had like certain number of characters equals like the average number of characters take a certain amount of time. Um, so are people you know writing really long um, messages? Do they write really long messages at the beginning of a of a mailing list um, and then it kind of dies out? You know, are women writing more than men? These kinds of questions I think could be really interesting. Um, again, message uh, gender and the amount of time that a message is. And then thread, who's responding to who, um, what's the gender balance of these threads, and um, yes. So, um, and then we started parsing. So we've identified three different types of mailing lists, um, a discussion, a user, and a developer mailing list. We've also done, in, in case people are involved with these communities, um, PostGIS and LibTech. We'd started with TalkUS as the only OpenStreetMap one. Um, right now we're only working with um, 
uh, Piper Mail and Mailman, but would love to extend that to Google if somebody wants to join. Um, and of course, we used um, D3, since that's super popular, um, with some CouchDB and Python. Everything's on GitHub, um, and you can check it out here. And you can also see some of our online, uh, I'm gonna show you some things that I'm running locally, but you can see some of the online um, visualizations here. So uh, before I do like attempt to do an online de demo, I, I just wanna show you some of the things that I, I've observed. Um, these are no conclusions, it's not like hard research or anything, but some things I've observed. So if you look on the bottom, this is the makeup of the, um, of the developer mailing list in terms of who's actually participated. There might be some lurkers, you know, but it's 3% um, women, 88% men, and 9% uh, unknown, which means like we weren't able to identify the gender um, based on their mailing list, on the, uh, you know, mail, mail name. And I, I think as expected, um, you know, 96% of the conversation was dominated by uh, the male participants. Um, theme, women participated about 3%. Um, and then the unknowns, uh, you know, again, 1%. Uh, and again, this goes from 2010 to 2013. Um, we parsed um, 992 profiles, um, 13,000 messages, and 2,500 threads. Um, so OSM Talk, uh, I, what I think is super interesting is how similar, they're almost identical. Um, and uh, you know, Talk is a little bit more active uh, with uh, 20,000 messages, uh, 3,000 threads uh, and you know slightly over a thousand user profiles um, but again this dynamic uh, looks looks pretty similar even though there's slightly more female participants so, um, now let's look at talk us this is where I think things get interesting so way to go women um, participants are at, at 11 percent I mean that's actually a, I think a pretty good uh, jump there's a bunch of unknowns and so there might be like women in that mix um, and uh, we have about like 60% male. So you know the dynamics of like who's uh, part of the OpenStreetMap is community is is looks like it's changing, right? Um, and this, I, when I saw this, I was like, this is hopeful. You know, maybe we'll get to 70%. Um, and but then you look at the conversation, um, and the conversation is still um, again almost identical to the developer and the talk mailing list. So you know we might be changing the community, might be growing, but exactly who's talking in this community um, may not be shifting. Then you look at hot OSM, for, for people who are not familiar with that, this is humanitarian OpenStreetMap team, um, and they do a lot of, um, as the name would suggest, humanitarian work. And so uh, they have a very similar um, dy um, gender dynamic in terms of people um, who are participating in the mailing list. Are they identical? Like, they're, they're pretty much identical. Um, and then look how different the conver conversation is. I mean, and people who are part of those communities, this may not be surprising. There are a lot of um, female leaders in that space. Um, but you can really see the, the difference that they're making in our online uh, dialogue. And so just in summary, and like my eyes are starting to blur, but um, again, everything's almost identical, um, but HOT is really in a different space. So I'll just go quickly through some of these. Um, uh, you can see here, like, OSM Dev, there was a lot of activity at the beginning in 2010 and starting to taper off. Um, same thing with OSM Talk. Um, but, you know, this uh, Talk US is, I mean, our, our conversations, even if people are getting maybe frustrated with them, I'm not sure, but um, th this is going up. Um, look how little was happening in 2008. I'm not sure if it, I think it started in 2008, so that'd be part of it. Um, and the same thing with Hot OSM. And so we can almost, like, gauge the health of the community to a certain extent. Um, by the you know activity of the conversations that are happening online. Uh, all right, real fast. Um, so there are some big technical challenges. Gender is really difficult to parse. Um, once what we do is we parse the mailing list and match it to um, a list that we have from the uh, that we put together from the U.S. Census Bureau, and then um, need to go through that manually. Um, because, say, for instance, Andrea, who's on the GeoServer mailing list, um, he would be identified as a, man, as a woman um, with this kind of parsing, um, but is actually uh, a guy. So um, things like email dates um, are in odd formats, and we weren't able to do, uh, two, I think, 2008 and uh, lower for OSM Dev and Talk US because they changed their, um, their t date format. Um, and again, people have multiple email addresses. Well, actually, I haven't said this again, but people have multiple email addresses. I mean, it's hard to get a single voice uh, for a user. 
Um, in terms of what's next, uh, I, I'm really intrigued by this idea of an activity score. Like, so just because somebody's participating a lot, are they dominating conversation or are they helping people? Um, influence score, are there people that are um, initiating really long threads um, or helping newbies? And then in terms of relation scores, like who's helping who or who's talking to who or men only responding to men or women helping out other women? Um, and, and again, who are initiating conversations? And here are just some sketches of other ideas that we've had for visualizations, um, a, the length of a thread, um, both these bubble charts, social networks, um, and the activity score and influence score. As you can see where people kind of fall. Not necessarily putting a mm, connotation on them. And our, our sort of our approach is like we want to keep going. I mean, the idea of having, well, we want to keep going. We want to grow this. I mean, adding more lists. Adding more analysis, I think, allows us to actually see a bit more of our dynamic of what's happening um, to make more focused initiatives and eventually increase um, the diversity and create a better OSM. I'm actually, if people want to see a live demo, um, there's a birds of feather at 3.30 and I can show it. You can actually filter by individual participants to see how they're communicating. Um, so it's, it's pretty interactive, but I, I won't jump in there. Does anybody have any questions? Uh, yes, Jeff, sorry. <laughs> yes, um, that's, part of, that's part of the plan. Um, so yes, that's exactly what the tech lead wants to do. So um, did you have a question? I doubt that. I think the Italian Prime Minister also appointed a lot of women uh, <laughs> leaders. And I'm not sure that that solved the problem, but we should look at that. Yes. No, they, they, you're, you're, but you're absolutely right to the larger point. Like, there's a lot of different models that we can look at, and there have been really successful, or there have been successful movements um, around um, l finding equality. So, um, both in government and in some open source communities. So, there, there are things that t that can be done on a large scale. So, sorry, Mar Martin, yeah. Martin, Martin, sorry. Right. Yeah, so um, Mar Martin. <laughs> Martin. Um, yeah, right, exactly. He um, asked, if, are we considering other forms of um, conversation uh, in the analysis? Is something we definitely want to do. I mean, this is something we've been doing on our free time for a couple months. Um, so, any way to extend it, and if people are interested in helping, um, we are all ears. Um, yes? Mm -hmm. yeah, so, right, so the question was about surveys, um, and uh, yes, we actually have a draft of a survey that it would be great to get uh, feedback on um, that we would like to send out to get more of some of this um, other sorts of data to, mix, to add to the mix. Um, one of my uh, questions, just in general, and again, I'm not a researcher, is that it seems that a lot of the work around OpenStreetMap, and I would even say Wikipedia, is um, these kinds of surveys. Um, and not necessarily, you know, we have all these like fancy visualizations of edits. Um, why are we not like visual? There is um, 
a conversation around who's included and who's empowered and who's disenfranchised in the data that we collect, you know? And so I'd like to understand if we can actually analyze um, what we've already created, um, uh, as well as have surveys about, you know, participation. So, um, yes, in the back. Yeah. A woman. I, uh, oh, good. Yes, we are. We are. We're like this. Yes. So. <laughs> I agree. Totally, I agree, and that's why I yeah was asking. Sorry, I guess I'll ask one last question. But there is a three thirty. There's a conversation. Um, there's a birds of feather, and I'd love to continue that. So, um, um, yes, Ian. <laughs> oh, thank you. So. Great, great question. So the question was awesome. <laughs> Thanks for doing this. Yes, my answer is yes, thank you. So I hope others will join, so thank you. <laughs>